Oh yeah, let's go. Let's go, fellas. Where are we going? We're going back to 2022 with the games of 2022. Yo, it's me, Majority. And I'm very excited to reflect on the previous year. I beat a lot of games and I'm stoked to talk about them. In fact, I've seen a lot of videos like this that are on my watch later, but I do like these style of videos. A lot of people I've seen doing like 10 lists, like the best 10 games that they played. And I recommend you go watch those ones. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to tell you every damn game that I beat last year uh, or that I considered beat. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Let me explain to you why I beat this game. If you enjoy beating games, just beat them. Subscribe to me, Majority, because I do that too. I beat my games. Most, some of them. I'm, I'm working. I got a backloggery thing going. It's like, what, 50% of my collection is beat? And then 50% has never had a beating. Uh, I am recording this during a majority stream segment, which I do periodically. So stay tuned to the Discord if you want updates on that. Because I usually tell you like 20 minutes before, oh, hey, I'm going to do majority streams in like 20 minutes. Uh, I do them like every two months or so. And I do the Q&As in those segments. And uh, yeah, this you can also ask questions in the Q&A. So if you have a question about any game that I beat, feel free to ask it there. And I'll cover it in March. But I do want to say, Alex, Terry, I see you. But I will not be looking at chat while I am recording. Okay, I don't have the number. I think it was close to like 40, 45 games that I beat. But we're just going to go down the list. I'll tell you when I beat it. So on January 15th of last year, I beat Banjo-Kazooie on the Xbox Series S. The Xbox Series S was a gift from Alex and Spencer to me when I was going through a hard time. And it meant a huge deal to me. And it still does. I actually really like the console quite a bit. More than I expected. Uh, retrospective coming soon that was requested by Alex and I can agree with that video idea so I'll do it and as celebration when I got game pass the first game you knew I was going to download was rare replay I don't really use game pass that much but rare replay was on there and then I bought the game later when it was on sale and it is a gift that keeps on giving and I love me some banjo uh, it is a series that is Significant to me, mostly for Kazooie and Tui, although I do like Nuts and Bolts a little bit, now that I've tried it more. Kazooie is not my favorite. I prefer Tui, but it played so smooth. You could just boot it up and 100% the world in like 30 minutes. There are a couple exceptions. There's a few areas where I spent a bit more time, but the Xbox version makes it a bit easier, such as with Clank, not Clanker's Cavern, Although, yeah, Clanker's Cavern, see, here's the thing. The Xbox version saves your note progress, while the N64 one does not. Also, the game is freaking beautiful on the modern television. I am so appreciative that Microsoft gave Rare the spotlight back on the Xbox One and that that came back for the Xbox Series S. Banjo has become a mascot for Xbox. How's that? I don't know, but I'll take it and I'll play it because I have it and... I had a great time playing Banjo-Kazooie. Two days later, I beat Shin Megami Tensei V. Yeah, in 48 hours, I beat Shin Megami Tensei V. No, I didn't. I had been playing it for a while, but the 17th of January marked my completion of the game. I did an archive with Spencer and Games with T, PXN Gaming, VG Mashup. All three are the same entity. I'm on. And uh, a man. I beat it with a man. <laughs> I love the SMT series. Five, I was in a bit of honeymoon phase after playing. The narrative is stupid. It, it, it The characters are very difficult to latch onto, which is tough because everything else in the game is so good. It, it looks so cool seeing these demons on screen. It's challenging SMT combat like you've come to know and love. And then once you get to the post game, it's like you could just cruise through it in three hours. I was on a journey to uh, get 100% of the Demon Compendium complete, and it just was too much of a bitch to complete, so I never ended up doing it. 
but I got really close. I was on my like fourth playthrough uh, on like the new game plus runs. I think my final percentage was around like 97% of all demons. It just got boring after that point. I don't think it makes sense to play it that way. But I think for the first playthrough, it is worth it. Especially because this is kind of like a budget RPG now. It does show you the limitations of like, I don't know, maybe the genre. I feel like they are trying to do a lot, which, you know, when trying to do a lot, when you wear too many hats, you don't wear all of them well. And the problem is if one of those hats is the one that you wear to work, then basically your job screwed. And in this case, the one that S- the hat that SMT5 had put on terribly was the story hat. And it affected the whole experience, sadly. Everything felt like a shell. It didn't really feel like I was playing with characters. It just felt like I was playing with uh, empty vessels, which sucked. You know, because it looked promising. It looked like it had so much more. And it was like five years in development. That's like a long time. Like it was announced in 2016. So for them to have dropped the ball in that regard was devastating. On January 27th, I beat Sonic Advance, which I played for the button mappers. It is a Sonic game I did not care about. (laughs) It was not great. I know people love the Advanced series, but that first game was rough. I had actually played Advanced 2 later and did not love it. I did not love it. Uh, it was cool to a point, but then some things were unnecessarily difficult, which doesn't make sense for a Sonic game for me. I feel like they should be approachable. It shouldn't be annoying. And a, a Sonic Advance was annoying to me. In February, the first game I beat on the 6th was Fable. Another game I played through Game Pass. I never actually bought it. I just played the Game Pass thing, which made it worth it. I hadn't played that game through in maybe 10 years, a decade, maybe more. Maybe since high school, maybe 15. So I was very appreciative to get to play it again. And I don't know. I I think it, 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 it has not held up well from a visual standpoint. But I actually really liked kind of the freedom the limited freedom that you get in Fable. It's actually, it's like a quick 10 hour adventure game to play with decent skill trees where you could kind of customize your character however you want. The good and bad arc is like, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's meaningless. It's not felt too deeply. It feels kind of fruitless by the end, which is sad, but I generally enjoyed playing it again for what it was. The next game I beat the next day was G Darius HD. Now, I think I had beat it with several credits, but I had played this game and played this game and played it again and again and again. And I beat it so many times. I saw all five endings. I got a bunch of trophies. I got like 70 plus percentage trophies. It's too hard to get the one credit clear for me, which leads to like the highest quality trophy. But I love the presentation in it. It's a beautiful game with a great spaceship shooter combat system. You steal enemy ships and you can use them to your advantage. There's a bit of stage memorization that happens. It is uh, an arcade game. as Most people know it probably from the PS1 game that was on Title Legends 2. That's how I knew it. But the HD version was beautiful. You get four games in there. You get the arcade game. You get the PS1 game. You get the HD polished game. And you get like two versions of uh, of the HD and the, the arcade version. So I had a great time with G Darius HD. And it was my game of the year on the button mappers. So there's that. And I, I, I have nothing but positive things. I'm a Darius fan. Go Darius next game I beat was Shadow of the Beast, the remake for PS4. And I played it for Alex Month on the button mappers. And, you know, I had always kind of found the first game appealing, like stylistically. I don't know that I was ever very good at it, but this game felt very cool from like a mission standpoint. And... I think it makes you feel like that kind of brutal wolf. To me, this is like what Altered Beast would be like if Altered Beast was good. Or just the wolf stage. He's a... You're like a... I don't know how to say it. Like, you're basically Wolverine and only in wolf mode and like 
wolf, Wolverine and wolf mode. That doesn't make sense. You are a altered beast, and you basically just dist- you you commit carnage against these evil demons and villainous humans. And I don't know. It was really cool to play by the end. I don't remember it too well, but I I enjoyed what I played of it. In March, I beat No More Heroes. How many heroes were left? None, because I beat it. I was resistant to playing the game because I think I played it on the Wii for a little bit. But I actually appreciated it towards the end. It was risky, but I think that it, like, it was fun just kind of roaming around the map on the bike. Some of the missions were funny and quirky. The style is not my style, per per se. Like, that kind of, like, edgy Travis style. But it's fine. I I, I enjoyed it. I I enjoyed it for what it was. Two days later, I beat Banjo-Tooie. My favorite in the Banjo series. I had been playing it uh, just just to have fun. Just because I was like, fuck it. I had such a great time with Banjo-Kazooie. And, you know, I... I love the collectathon aspects of that game. The music's terrific. And again, it looked beautiful on the TV. It was just as good as I remembered it. I 100% completed it, just as I 100% completed Kazooie. Uh, with the exception of like some Cheeto pages and stuff. But yeah, man, that's that's a great game. If only there was a Banjo 3E. Later in March, towards the end, on the 27th, I beat Nano Assault. Neo. I think the Matrix. No, just Nano Assault Neo the on the PS4. It, it was a twin stick shooter, and I was craving it. I had been, I had played Nano Assault before on 3DS, and I was just looking for like a fun, quick game to play, and that was it. It's fun. It's like this microbial look at like a spaceship shooter. I guess you're like on cells and you attack like these giant amoebas, and there's like high score elements and leaderboards and like for geometry wars fans i think nano assault neo is really cool it is clearly an indie game but it's developed by a a, a beloved developer of mine uh Sheenan entertainment i think they go overlooked a bit but they're they're known for the the neo or the nano assault games nano assault nano stray nano stray 2 both of which are all three of which are good games but this one is different than the DS predecessors. Those are more straightforward, vertical spaceship shooters. I think they're vertical. Maybe it's horizontal. Whereas this is a 3D twin stick shooter. Really good, though. All right. In April, I played Electroplankton. Now, you don't exactly get credits, but I played through every musical stage. It's kind of like a how would you say, like a state-of-the-art kind of game? Electroplankton's where you take the stylus on the DS and you drag your cursor up and down and make the notes go different places and they're unique challenges. Tech demo, I think you'd call it that. So I considered it a beat. It was novelty, but I didn't really much care for it. A couple weeks later, I beat Ori and the Blind Forest on April 15th. We did a map out on it with uh, Mr. Games with T. Beautiful game, great presentation, and I think there's some really great escape sequences in the game. I can see why the game has the praise it does, and from what I've heard, Will of the Wisps improves on that formula tenfold. I think a fellow YouTuber of us, ours, gave it a shout out, so I was listening. I heard you, Fabrizio. <laughs> on April 21st, I beat Solner X2. The final prototype, Definitive Edition, I think. That's a long title. Okay, I didn't, like, get 100% of the stages, but you see the credits after, like, stage 6. Unlocking stage 7, I, I wasn't able to do it. There were, like, too many hidden medals, and I really didn't want to go to a freaking walkthrough for a spaceship shooter. That didn't make sense to me. So, but otherwise, the game would stop at stage 3 if you collected none of the medals. So, I considered it beat. It was fine. I... To be honest, in terms of presentation, it's not my favorite. I don't think it's, you know, it, the music is particularly standout, which is important to me in a spaceship shooter. Uh, the gameplay system, I think there were like three ships. 
you could choose from. And then like the medals affected your score. It was very much a score based shooter. It just demanded that you replay levels in certain segments a bunch of times. It was never obvious where the medals were hidden or how you're supposed to get them. And I, I kind of just, I gave up on it after that. After really trying, I did give it a good attempt. But I did review it. So there's that. The next day, I beat Firewatch on Game Pass. I was looking for something to play, I think, for Xbox Month on the Button Mappers. And I reviewed it there. But Firewatch was a great indie game and really made you feel alone in the woods. You could really feel it. And you know what? Your main character, you get some choices in his dialogue and you're talking through a walkie-talkie. I, I was impressed by Firewatch. I had a really good time with it. I hope they do this series or uh, that company does more with the IP. In May, I beat Game 10 Goku Cruise and Mix on PS4. Uh, Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. And... I don't know. I mean, it felt like kind of a gimmicky spaceship shooter. So I never ended up reviewing it. I just didn't, I didn't feel like I really unlocked the game, but it was like on sale. It's usually like a $50 game and I got it for like 10 bucks. So I, I played through it, but not impressed. It like, it's a bizarro kind of spaceship shooter where you're like playing in, with main cabinets and anime girls in the background. So, not much to say on it. On May 8th, I beat Kirby and the Forgotten Land. To be honest, I mostly forgot about it. I I haven't even touched it since. I mean, you could tell it was trying to be the grandiose like 3D Kirby adventure. As much 3D as Kirby can be, I guess. But it's still very much like a level-based thing where it's like you're, you're, you're going on one set path. I just wasn't impressed. I, it's the same music throughout, and I think Kirby 64 was more impressive to me. Yeah. I think Kirby 64 is better than Kirby in the Forgotten Land. On May 21st, I beat Etrian Odyssey, which I played with Spencer on his channel, RPG Archive. I had never beaten one of these. I would played a bunch of them and just given up, but it was really great to play alongside somebody. And... You know, it's one of those games where even if you put it down for a week, it's not like, what have I done? Because everything's logged. It's right there on the bottom screen of your DS. So you never have to worry about just forgetting your place in the game. I played the original DS version. There is a 3DS remake. To my understanding, it doesn't really add too much. But there are some convenient things that you may want from the map on the from the 3DS version that are not in the DS original. It was good. It was really good. You know what? Um, it impressed me, actually, in terms of narrative. I was expecting nothing, and then there was something that was substantive. So that was cool. A nice twist. Okay, I got a high score. Okay, I played um the Pac-Man collection that came out because that was on Game Pass, and then Alex and I reviewed it on his channel, Turbo Zone. Turbo Zone! turbo so i'm gonna have a bunch of pac-man games to mention to you right now uh some of them are beat some of them are just high scores so the original pac-man i got a high score of 22,090. pack attack 7767 pac mania 87,610. and then i beat pac-man arrangement on june 29th i don't know i mean it was it was nice playing that collection. There are a couple Pac-Man games that I was turned on to. Uh, I, you know, Pac-Man Arrangement, there's two versions. There's like a modern and an old school version. I beat the modern one first, actually really liking it. Um, but the, the retro style one is cool too. I had played the other, the retro one, excuse me, previously for our map out of the Game Boy Advance cartridge. But it was a nice, fun little Pac-Man game. And then I like playing the classic ones. Uh, I, what's the one I really like? It's the one where you become like giant Pac-Man. I think it's Super Pac-Man. I think that's it. Alex, you can correct me. But that one was that one was really good, and I I got really into that. I think that's the one with like the keys and stuff. On June 9th, I beat Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. I had nostalgic memories of this. But apparently it's basically just a remake of Kirby's Adventure. 
So I went and then I played Kirby's Adventure immediately after. And I beat that on June 18th. I honestly wasn't as impressed as I was as a child. I think I played a different game because I remember Meta Knight's Adventure. Maybe I was thinking of Superstar or something. I don't know. But I feel like I played a whole segment, a whole new game plus is Meta Knight. And this was not that game. So I was really disappointed that I wasn't playing the game that I thought I was from my childhood. If anybody knows which Kirby game that is, where not Superstar, there's I feel like there's another one where you can play as Meta Knight and play the whole game over. Let me know. In July, I beat Assault Suit Lanos, the PS4 remake. I really liked this game. I was surprised because I knew that the first game was hard, a little too hard. I had played it before. But this one was more approachable. I think I played on easy and it was still hard as balls. There were a couple bosses that were a pain in the ass, but it's fair. It, you know, each one is mission style, so you can start the mission over. You don't start from the beginning of the game. Uh, the the music is kind of iconic. And so I don't know. I have this kind of nostalgia for it. It really surprised me. I didn't expect to finish it or to be to love it, but I was just looking for a game to play, and that was it. It was a great game. Assault Suit Lanos. Oh, you know what? A funny joke from that review was was the uh, you're part of the Assault Suit Squadron, aka ASS, for short. I beat G Darius HD again in July. I guess that's when I reviewed it, so I'm gonna move on from that. On August 8th, I beat Shinobi, the arcade version. I had never played that one, but I had played Revenge and Shinobi 3. So it was nice to play the original. We did a map out, which is overlooked. Go watch it uh, if you beat it. It's honestly a fun, quick little game to beat. And I think it's approachable, to be honest, except for the last world. If you lose, no matter how many continues you have, you game over. That is so dumb. I don't know why they kept that in the Xbox arcade version. I don't know if the Switch, <coughs> excuse me, Sega Ages version replicates that or not, but Xbox, what the hell, man. Also on August 8th, I beat Thundercross, a Konami arcade spaceship shooter on like the arcade anniversary collection. You, sh you can play the Japanese version, but I think that the Western version is easier. That's the one I played. And so I would I would recommend that version first if you're not that great at spaceship shooters. But if you're a bit more proficient, yeah, switch to the Japanese mode and try it out. Not that impressionable, though. I don't think it was like that beautiful or anything. But the next one I played was great. On August 15th, I beat Dragon Spirit, the original Game where you play as a dragon. The dragon is the spaceship in the spaceship shooter. And there's some really great music. And really great level design. I love this like aquatic stage where like the, the lights are going in and out, in and out. And also there's like you could do two modes. And based on how you play the, the pre-level, it will dictate whether you get easy mode or hard mode. The easy mode's too easy. As with some spaceship shooters, I know like Felios is like that as well. But the normal setting one is really good. I still haven't one credit cleared it. I would like to. I think I could. It just gets tricky. There's like there's one snow level that's really good. It's terrific. The the thing starts going real fast. It moves faster and faster. And you're like navigating around like mountains and snowballs are coming at you. It's really good. Uh, bosses are not too tricky, so I appreciated that. But it's really the stage hazards that are tough. Also, it, it is Zevia style, so you distinguish between aerial attacks and ground attacks. But I think you can fire both at once. I think there's a button for that. That I also played, I think, on the... That was on the Namco collection. Also, I reviewed that. On August 19th, that beat Binary Star Infinity, an indie game. I think it was a one-man project. Uh, it was cool for what it was. A little vector style, but it looked kind of flashy. Like a flash game, not flashy. It was worth it for like a dollar. <laughs> like, I didn't mind. I didn't hate it. On August 22nd, I beat Fast 
Striker. That was a Dreamcast game, a homebrew game that came out after the Dreamcast was done being, like, not in the market anymore. And it had a unique gameplay system. From what I remember, I think there were, like, three sh- three level types you could play. Novice, Intermediate, Expert, and then, like, Tate mode. I had beat it on easy and normal, but I remember it just being too difficult on the hard levels. I don't remember exactly what, like, the gameplay system was. It was, like, color-based or something. It was a little weird. Sometimes you could, like, hit obstacles and not be actually taking damage. Big old bosses. Uh, There is some thrill there. But it is a spaceship shooter I was able to say I was able to beat authentically. So that was nice. You know, spaceship shooters are hard. Continuing on the kick, I had beat Aces of the Luftwaffe Squadron on August 25th. That is the newer Aces of the Luftwaffe game. I think, yeah, I did beat Aces of the Luftwaffe sometime throughout the year. So I think I just forgot to put it on the list. The first game is more like Android mobile. But this one really felt like it was made for console. It has, like, you have, like, four pilots with you at once, so it's really hard not to take damage. I had actually started a review for this, and then I just, I think my footage corrupted or something, or I couldn't stream it to Twitch, so I gave up. But, uh, I don't know. It still didn't really feel, like, perfected. Like, I I didn't get that seamless feel from it. Some of the bosses are way too hard. Like, you have to upgrade the shit out of your characters in order to even take them on. Which I get it. They're aces, and it's going for this kind of, like, big boss feel. But I don't think I was really impressed by the game. I didn't hate it. It was fine for a spaceship shooter, but I've seen better, I guess I would say. Like, if I'm going that kind of military style, I'm going Steel Empire. I'm not. This is not necessarily what I, I wanted. But I wasn't expecting Steel Empire either, so I don't know. Hey, given the choice... Go with the Zeppelin. Love a good Zeppelin. Okay. On August 26th, Lost to Time, we streamed uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, beaten with Alex and Spencer. Then Brian was watching. So, Brian, you should have the footage somewhere. I hope you can find it for it. No, I'm joking. I don't think I played a Turtles game before. So I didn't have, like, that nostalgia. I also didn't really care for, like, the characters of the movie back in the days. So it was fun, I guess. But I don't think I... Beat-em-ups are not my thing necessarily. So I couldn't tell you how complicated or, you know, nice this one was. It just wasn't impressionable to me. I do like Streets of Rage for what it is, but it's not my genre of choice. On September 11th, I beat Shenmue, the first game. It took a while. I had been this has been years in the making, and I think the most tragic part was after seeing the credits, I realized that in previous attempts to beat this game, I was like this close to beating it. I had saved like at the harbor on day five of the forklifting, and if I had just pushed a little more, I would have beat the game. But it's fine. It was nice to be able to do it again. Experience some of the funny dialogue. Uh, just kind of dick around in, uh, what is it, like Yokosuka Harbor or I can't remember the name of the town. Just like talk to people, look at their like stupid faces and have them repeat dialogue options. It's antiquated. It's not aged great, but it's fucking funny. I, like, I, I don't know. I got a laugh. I got a freaking laugh. On September 17th, I beat Dragon Quest Nine. Yes. Why did I beat Nine first before Six? Well, it was just a bit more approachable. Six is least approachable to me. Uh, I didn't hate Dragon Quest Nine. I just thought that it was built for, like, DS connectivity and stuff. Even if it's not, like, in your face, the post-game is dependent on it, and the main game feels incomplete without the post-game. If that makes sense. 
So you can play the main game without the DS thing mattering. But I think in order to enjoy post game, you have to like do some shenanigans to connect. And I just don't care. On October 15th, I beat the first Oddworld game mapped out. The button mappers. It's funny. The first 20 minutes. You should just listen to that, if anything. <laughs> Maybe we should clip it. The first Oddworld was a nice aesthetic experience. Um, it was, you know, a meaningful narrative, especially when you know some of the history behind Lord Lanning. I did not love the gameplay in the first game. It was really tricky uh, securing the Mudokons at some points. I remember I had progressed the stage and I lost like 60 of them in one go. I did not get the real ending, so I got the torturous ending and then I just watched the real ending on YouTube. That's fine. The final game segment is tough. It's really tough. It was cool. On November 20th, I beat Shin Megami Tensei 4 with Alex. He has beaten the game as well. We had archived it for Spencer's channel. Spencer wasn't there, so we did it without him. It is, without a doubt, one of my favorite turn-based RPGs. I was so excited that Alex played it and to get to be able to dissect it and talk about it with one of my best friends. It is still as impactful now as it was back in the day. Some incredible music. Just I go and listen to that stuff outside of the game. The demon fusion system you can get lost in for hours, the compendium, all that. We got a whole podcast on it with a bunch of clips. You should check out Spencer's channel for it. It's worth it. Is it worth it? It's worth it. Remake it, baby. Remake, remaster. Your choice, but I want it. I want to play it again. Third time. We'll go for the true ending next time. How about that? On December 15th, I beat Super Mario Land 2. I feel like I cheesed my way through Wario's Castle, but everything else was pretty straightforward. It's a very stylish Mario game. I kind of wish I played it with the monochrome. Yeah, it is It is the, probably the best Mario Land game I've played. I don't know if I put it up there as the best Mario 2D Mario that I played. That's a tricky pick, but given more time, I'll be happy to just play through it again casually and try and just finish. That'd be fun. The last game I beat for the year was Klonoa, The Door to Phantom Mile on December 16th. I was very excited to try it out. I've heard nothing but great things. It was great. It was a really great game. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it has this charm to it visually. And it's not got my favorite soundtrack, but it reminds me of Kirby 64 in some pretty great ways. So that is all the games I beat for 2022. I'll just tally them up for you real quick with the addition of one for uh, Ace of the Luftwaffe, which I forgot to put on here. We got that, Banjo, SMT, Sonic, Advance, Fable, G. Darius, Shadow of the Beast, No More Heroes, Banjo Tui, that's 10. Nano Assault, Electroplankton, Ori, 1, Solner 2, Firewatch, Game Tengoku, Cruise and Mix, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, Etrian, Odyssey, uh, oh, Pac Mania, that's 20. I forgot to mention that. I forgot what. Oh, I did not beat Pac Mania. Take that off. Take that off. I did, definitely did not beat Pac Mania. Uh, Kirby, Nightmare in Dreamland, that's 20. Kirby's Adventures, 21. Pac-Man Arrangement, 22. Assault Atlantis, 23. G-Darius HD, 24. Shinobi Arcade, 25. Thunder Cross, 26. Dragon Spirit, 27. Binary Star, 28. Fast Striker, 29. Aces of the Luftwaffe Squadron, 30. Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, 31. The Tremu, 32. Dragon Quest 9, 33. Oddworld, 34. SMT, 4, 35. Super Mario Land 2, 36. And Klonoa makes 37 games for the year of 2022. The game of the year was G Darius HD, undoubtedly. Oh, I might be 36. I might have read G Darius HD twice. I don't remember. Um, but I'll just tell you the standouts for me, the best ones I played. So, obviously, Banjo 1 and 2. Banjo Kazooie and Banjo 2 for Xbox. Ori in the Blind Forest, 
Firewatch, Etrian Odyssey, Assault Sulanos, G Darius, Dragon Spirit, Shimogami Tensei 4, and Klonoa. Those are probably like my top 10 for the year. Each for different reasons, but yeah. Great games all around. And just a great year. I'm so happy I got to enjoy gaming as I usually do. And this has been a great video. If you stayed through to the end, let me know which one was, uh, which one are you happiest that I played? And which one would you like to try? Cheers. And here's to another year of great gaming content. You're the slime baby. Let's get some Dragon Quest done. <laughs>